powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Now, live from inside the Matt Black Kia Studios, this is Football at Four. Josh Eddick, Philly from Mike Gill on a hump day Wednesday here on 97.3 ESPN. Yes, the Phillies are still losing at the end of the eighth inning, 5-3. to three. But there is some Eagles news to touch on. I wasn't expecting any Eagles news to happen, but, you know, out of nowhere. Well, is anyone really surprised that an offensive lineman is in the Eagles news? We'll get to all that and more. Jeff Mosher, of course, you catch him on the Inside the Birds podcast, InsideTheBirds.com, and follow him on Twitter at Jeff P. Mosher is the Twitter handle. Jeff, welcome back. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm good, my friend. You uh, enjoying the pinch hitting role today? Well, I'm certainly, I think, doing better than the Phillies are. So, yeah. Well, it doesn't take much. <laughs> uh, so the news came out for those who didn't see it. Ian Rapport confirmed a report this afternoon that the Eagles worked out DJ Fluker for a workout, a, a guy who was a former first round pick. It, I mean, should we really be surprised though that the Eagles are working out offensive linemen at this point? No, never surprising. And something that Adam and I have talked about is when you when you look at what the Eagles have historically had going back, you know, just in general, a couple of years, but especially last year, um, is really good depth on their offensive line. Uh, and last year, maybe some of the best depth they've ever had. You have a first round pick, Andre Dillard, as your left tackle. You have Jack Driscoll, who had started a lot of the games as a swing uh, tackle guard. You had. Um, uh, so Opeta at one point, um, I'm trying to think there's another guard whose name I'm, I'm not. Oh, Cam Jurgens was there in case Jason Kelsey was hurt. And we saw that he could play center in the preseason. So, um, yeah, I mean, losing Isaac Samalo though. Right. And then losing Dillard threatened not only a starting spot, but depth, even though they did draft Tyler Steen. So, uh, they do have Fred Johnson who has played a little bit on their roster competing to make the team. And they have um, Tyrese Robinson, who I believe has played a little bit, a couple made a couple of starts in the NFL, who is on the team. But, you know, they're always looking for good backup veteran depth who can step in there and hold the fort down if need be. And Fluker has been a guy who's played a while in the NFL, and um, he's always seemingly had a, a ceiling. Uh, it's funny because I did a, a whole scouting project on DJ Fluker when I was doing the scouting academy. Um, run by Dan Hatman, and I watched a lot of the tape on DJ, and he's a really good athlete, and he's got, you know, good anchor skills. He has, like, really, you know, he was, he was a first-round pick. But the one thing that always stood out to me is that he blocks with his head down, which um, is never good, and if you look, he's had a lot of concussions in his career. Um, so I don't know how much of that has changed since uh, he, he was last playing, but that was always one big obstacle. But, again, you're talking about depth here and a guy that um, – if he can still play and we'll see how the, the tryout went, certainly someone who's smart enough to, or you'd want to bring into camp and, and be there to compete. I mean, is that something where you, a guy like Stoutland comes in and you turn to Stoutland and be like, Hey, we know this guy has a bad tendency. Can you work it out of him? And Stoutland says, yes, it's like, you know, come on down your next contest on the price is right. Yeah, p- potentially. Um, I mean, some guys have fatal flaws, right? Or, or, flaws that just don't go away um, or just don't, no matter how good the coaching is, it won't. I, I would imagine that anybody who's watched DJ Fluker tape saw what I saw, right? I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm sure offensive line coaches saw it and tried to correct it and probably maybe at some points got him to do better, but it felt like something that was never going to go away. And then of course you had a lot of concussion uh, issues, I believe. So, you know, could Stalin be the one, the uh, the offensive line whisperer? Sure. But th- there have been a couple of guys that Stalin hasn't been able to help. I mean, he never got through to Womack. Right. Um, you know, who was his own protege from Alabama. So I, I don't know. But the point is that it's it makes a whole lot of sense to kick tires there. When we think about the offensive line, obviously we're talking about right guard for a lot of this. You know, I know that Jason Kelsey spoke very highly of Say Amalu the like a week ago, say how intelligent he was and all this stuff. But, you know, realistically, you know, how concerned or not concerned should Eagle fans be about a position that, frankly, has the Eagles offensive line has been the strength of the last several years. And now there's this big question mark 
over right guard because I don't, I don't think anyone can say with a certainty, right, that we know exactly who the best player is at this point. Right. We can't say that with certainty. Um, I think it only becomes a concern, Josh, if like we're going through camp in the preseason and you feel like whoever won the job won it because the other guys lost it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you're taking the the least of the few evils uh, or anything like that. Or if all three, none of them really stand out. So you're just kind of going with one or the other based on some kind of, you know, draft status or pedigree or something that has nothing to do with how well or that, or how not well they competed. That, that would be the, to me, the only time to be concerned. But I do think that there is something to be said about the way the Eagles offense operates is Jason Kelsey makes a lot of the calls. It takes the pressure off the quarterback to have to do that. It lets Jalen Hurts play freely without too much in his head. And Jason Kelsey always had Isaac Sayamalu, right, especially in road games, silent count, to be his co-captain. So does Jason Kelsey losing his co-captain make it tougher for Jason Kelsey? And therefore, does that make it tougher on Jalen Hurts? So certainly that is something we'll have to watch as the summer and then the season progress. Jeff Mosher here on Football at Four, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. And over at InsideTheBirds.com, speaking of Jalen Hurts, Jeff, you wrote about how DeAndre Hopkins did an interview. And, of course, in today's age, you got to pay attention to every little thing that these athletes say on whatever random digital show or podcast or Instagram stream, right? You know, I yes. mean, yeah. so DeAndre Hopkins gave his list of the top five quarterbacks he wants throwing in the ball, and he had Jalen Hurts as number two. So should Eagle fans get excited, or was this just a guy on a podcast speaking his mind? Yeah, I'm going to go with B, although I do appreciate, as you just said, DeAndre Hopkins giving InsideTheBirds.com some fodder on what had been a slow news day. So uh, keep doing your thing, DeAndre, and all NFL athletes who are going on podcasts. Keep doing that. Um, But, yeah, I mean, obviously, Josh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is an outside perimeter receiver. He has been a complete master of the contested catch his entire life. So if you have DeAndre Hopkins on your team, he's playing on the outside. Well, the Eagles have two guys who were each, you know, who combined for about, what, 2,600 yards last year receiving between A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, and both of them are outside receivers. Now, those guys have the skill set and capability to move inside at times, but you don't want to turn any of them into a full-time slot receiver because that negates all the damage they can do down the field. And then on top of that, DeAndre Hopkins has a very large contract that calls for $19 million this coming year in base salary. So that's a pretty penny. <laughs> and I don't think the Eagles want to put any much, too many more money or resources in to wide receiver, considering they use first round pick on Devante, a first round pick and about 20 something million a year on AJ Brown. And, you know, after next year, they're going to probably, they're going to have to look at Devante Smith's contract and, and probably give him his extension. He's going to be up there for that by the end of next year. So, uh, it's a nice thought, but I just don't think – I think there are probably some other teams that can use DeAndre Hopkins a little bit more and have the the financial flexibility to make it happen. I think this thing that stands out to me more than anything is that, you know, I know a lot of Eagle fans are like, oh, DeAndre Hopkins. But it's like if you look at them, Hopkins and A.J. Brown are almost the exact same size. And Brown is like, what, six years younger than Hopkins? So it's like – what would it really make sense to get a player who basically does and is the size and is the makeup of a guy you already have, who you could argue at this point in his career, may be a better player in Brown. Yeah. I mean, they are different receivers, right? I mean, I, I, they, they both do, they're both contested catch type guys. Well, I think you, you see a ton more explosion, uh, a lot more yards after the catch that you get in AJ Brown, a lot more physical play. Whereas Deandre Hopkins again is, is going to be your sideline, your nine route, your, I mean, he can run more routes, but he's, he's a little bit different despite the fact that they're of the same height. Um, But yeah, to your point, you've got young dynamic 
all pro caliber or pro bowl caliber weaponry there at a spot at the X spot. You really don't need Deandre Hopkins. The other flip side of the coin with Hopkins is what he said is, should we be reading more into the fact that all of these players around the league keep speaking as highly about hurts who haven't even played with him? Like, People, you know, people look at, you know, oh, A.J. Brown's his best friend. Oh, he went, him and Devonta Smith, they were at Alabama together, right? Oh, you know, Sirianni's his coach. He wears the T-shirts everywhere. But, like, now we're getting, these are, these are multiple guys who are saying, this guy, Jalen Hurts, is legit. He's a guy. He's, a, he's the man. Like, should we read more into that, that the league looks at this guy a certain way? It's certainly a positive, right? I mean, there are certainly, I think, quarterbacks in this league, both, past and present who have not really been the apple of wide receivers eyes. Right. I mean, there have been certain quarterbacks in this league that wide receivers who are good wanted to get away from. (laughs) So it's always great when you have a quarterback who's become so good and so respected and nationally known that, yeah, you got receivers who say, I want to go running backs or tight ends or whoever that say, I want to go play with that guy. Because in some cases, to make that happen, guys have to take pay cuts. Guys have to, you know, um, make sacrifices. You know, you saw guys doing that to go play with Tom Brady, right? I mean, Randy Moss talks about how his career in Oakland was – he was going downhill. And if he had to stay in Oakland, maybe he never would have had the rejuvenation that he had when he went and played with Tom Brady, you know? So, um, it's, it's yeah, sure, it's quite possible that – and then, you know, obviously Jalen has to continue to play at this high level, but it's it's only a positive. It can't be a negative. Some non-direct Eagles news, but I wanted to ask you about it, was one of the conversations offseason has been about the Eagles putter situation. Like, who is going to be the putter? Like, I, Jeff, I still run the people who keep asking me who the Eagles punter is going to be. Like, they're they're legitimately concerned. And I saw the news today that, Matt Ariza, who was recently cleared of all charges, is working out for the Jets. So the first thing that came to my mind is, why isn't he working out for the Eagles? You're telling me that he he can't get into a punting competition with, I mean, whoever is going to be in camp at this point? Yeah, no, I mean, I I think it's you're making a valid point. I don't know that the Eagles did everything possible they could to try to bring in a true upgrade to compete against Aaron Sipos. They definitely like Tyler Zentner. They definitely believe he can push Sipos out the, out the door, and we'll have to see. You know, Zentner comes from Kansas State. It's a very good special teams school. It was under Bill Snyder. It continues to be under Chris Kleiman, I believe. Um, yes. This kid was a good punter and also a kicker, kickoff guy and kicker. So I mean, That's correct, yep. Yeah, so he, he's pretty well-rounded. If you're going to try to find a kid from the college ranks to come challenge – Aaron Sipos, it sounds like this kid has the makings to be able to do it. But I agree with you. I mean, you know, maybe, again, the Eagles have more information than you and I do uh, about the legal issues surrounding uh, surrounding Matt Ariza. Maybe that there's something they saw there that still kind of made them reluctant, even though legally he's been cleared. Just because you're clear, like we've seen with the NFL in the Ezekiel Elliott situation, just because you're legally um, clear doesn't mean you're going to be cleared by the NFL or that they don't think that you're guilty of something. So, um, you know, I don't know that that's really all about the Eagles, but in general, I would agree with you to say punting was an issue last year, it reared its head in the worst moment possible, the second half of a Super Bowl, And really the only thing they did to try to upgrade it or address it was pluck a kid out of college. Who's good, but who's never punted in the NFL before. Yeah. It just feels like such a, it feels like such an unnecessary gamble, I guess I would call it, because it's, you know, as you mentioned, it was such a glaring issue in the Super Bowl, and I felt like every week you and Adam talked about Brett Kern, about how, man, we were expecting a little more from this guy. Man, this guy's a, a former All-Pro, and he's come out and played like, like, it was like an Inside the Birds podcast, like rinse and repeat conversation about Brett Kern. And then Sip Boss wasn't any better in the biggest game of the year. And it's like, we're going in the offseason. It's like, hey, we got a guy from Kansas State who nobody remembers <laughs> his name. Right, exactly. And it's always bad when you spend, uh, as you, and you know this as a sports talk radio host, if you spend more than you know, five minutes 
talking about a punter on a podcast, you're probably going down a bad, bad path. But it is important. Like, there, there's no question about it. I will say that it is a position that you can upgrade fairly easily throughout the year. Guys get caught. Guys are on the – I mean, they thought that they were doing that with Brett Kern, clearly, and it didn't work out. But just because that didn't work out doesn't mean it will never work out. There'll, I'm sure there will be opportunities. But we'll have to see how the competition between – Zentner, Tyler Zentner goes with, with Aaron Sipos. I mean, if Aaron Sipos beats Tyler Zentner, there's something wrong with Zentner, I think, at this point. But that's a, that's a story for yeah. when we get to August. Uh, yes. A couple more for Jeff Mush here on Football on 4, powered by the Inside the Birds podcast. Uh, NFL rule changes. I want to get your take on a couple of these. Uh, obviously, there's the rule that people are saying it's the uh, 49ers cried so much that uh, they got the rule. By the way, the Phillies just tied the game. It's uh, 5-5 oh, wow, now nice. on the bottom of the nine. So maybe they won't lose this game. Uh, you know, by <laughs> the way, you want to guess who hit the homer, by the way? Um, I'm going to keep Bryce Harper would be my guess. No, it's actually just, actually better news. It's Trey Turner. Oh, Trey Turner? That's even better. Yes, yes. you're right. After he oh, had that geez. horrible swing and a miss earlier in the game with a ball that was like Ugh. three feet off the plate, he just hit a bomb to uh, nice. left field. So uh, good news for the Phillies. Uh, Five five. Absolutely. Now yeah. they got to just score the extra run and finish this off, <laughs> yeah, which they probably yeah, won't. Kimbrel has what? His four hundred save, three hundred save. He's he's got. I, I think it would be he's one away from that, right? Um, I think he's one away. I'll double check while we talk. But uh, I wanted to ask you about these rule changes because mm-hmm. you know I was talking with Rob Motti about this on Monday, and I was saying to him, and I want to ask you about this. You know, this three quarter, this three uh, quarterback role doesn't ding the inactive list. So, but it dings who's actually on the roster. So, like a team like the mm-hmm. Eagles, that you know they love to have like that tenth offensive lineman, or a team likes to have the extra cornerback, or a guy like Belichick loves to store random dudes on the roster, right? Like this is taking a roster spot away from somebody, even though it doesn't ding you on the inactive on game day. Um, well, how do you see it taking a roster spot away? Well, because you got to have him on the fifty-three. It can't be a guy oh, coming right. from can't be on your a practice squad. I, I, well, I was saying I I don't feel like that really does impact the Eagles as much because they've had three quarterbacks on the. It wasn't Ian Book on the actual fifty-three last he, year. He was, and then um, I remember they were hanging on the Nate Sudfeld for dear life a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, but it seems like this regime here likes to keep three quarterbacks on the active roster anyway, um, unless. They just don't have a guy that they feel is worthy of development. In fact, if, if I'm not mistaken, we were wondering if they were going to have four because Carson Strong was with them and then they waived him, but they never actually brought him back. He was so bad, I guess. They never did bring him back <laughs> right. to the practice squad. So it's they were comfortable going with three on the 53. So, yeah, for other teams, that might be an issue that only like to keep two on the 53 and one on the practice squad. For the Eagles – not so much of a problem, at least the way they've operated lately. Right. It's just, it's interesting to me that the, like, I, I still don't understand why the league doesn't just let everybody be active on game. I think it's the dumbest thing in the world, but you know, no, I nobody, agree. nobody asked me my opinion. They gave Roger Goodell his, uh, his extension through 2027. And you know, they said, Josh, go, go back to the radio. So, <laughs> well, you know, my thoughts on the whole rule change anyway. I mean, it's, I, I think it's silly. I think that, They changed the rules a long time ago to give you that extra spot um, and make it an active one, right? And then teams decided to go heavy elsewhere and not quarterback. That's their fault. They could have used that extra spot on the quarterback. And if you're down to your third quarterback in a playoff game or your emergency quarterback in a playoff game anyway, do you really think you're winning that game? No. I mean, did the Niners really think that they were going to win that game if they were able to bring – I don't know who the third, let's say it's Nate Sudfeld, right? Even though he wasn't on team at that point. If it's Nate Sudfeld, do they really, you think Nate Sudfeld's winning that game? I don't really think Nate Sudfeld's winning that game. So No, he's definitely not. The 49ers are just a bunch of sore losers, honestly. They, they really have been. Um, they have been the 49ers. No doubt, there's no doubt I mean, they, they are the most anti-fun team. Like, if the 49ers really cared about the fans, they would just told Christian McCaffrey to play quarterback the entire second half and not worry about it. Like, you know, Philly fans remember watching Vince Velasquez play left field, and we've seen Cody mm-hmm. Clemens pitch like three games this year. Like, come on, man. Let's have a little fun. Stop being so sour. I'm with you, my friend. Uh, before I let you go, the other rule I wanted to ask you about is um, 
This fair catch at the 25-yard line feels like it's the most blatant move by the NFL to get rid of kick and punt returns they possibly can get away with at this point. Yeah, and the funny thing is they didn't ex- they didn't exactly deny it. You know, I know there was a conference call with um, Rich McKay, the, conf- the, the competition committee leader, and someone I think asked him, well, how much closer are you getting to just not having a kickoff? And his answer was sort of like, well, that's not our plan, but I can't say that it's not some <laughs> I, I can't say it's never gonna happen either. Right. Uh, but I, I I do think though this rule, Josh, is not gonna impact that much. I mean, teams are still gonna try to kick the ball out of the end zone. And if you don't kick the I mean, this really only impacts if you're trying to short kick, right? And a guy catches the kickoff short of the 25. But usually if that's the case, they want they don't want to fair catch it because they want to take advantage of the short kick and run it back. So I can't imagine that we're going to see, you know, I've been wrong before, but I'm just trying to estimate how many kicks you really kickoffs are really going to be fair catch. That probably not that many. Probably not, but it's just it's just feels like it's just another like slap in the face or something that like like how many Eagle fans used to talk about, like, oh, we got Darren Sproles. He can run kicks and punts back. You know what I mean? Now it right. feels like it's like a complete dimension of the game where it's being forgotten about, and then the Eagle fan is just, you know, hoping that a, um, you know, fill-in-the-blank guy might make the roster for a reason that has nothing to do with kick and punt return. You know what I mean? Yeah, and listen, I mean, you know what? They might as well just scrap the kickoff altogether anyway and just get it over with if they're headed in that direction. I don't think people are going to be all that upset. The only people that are going to be upset are special teams coordinators. So uh, other than that, I don't think it's sort of much to do about nothing. I mean, I guess it'd be maybe the NFL PA would be mad that it might take a roster spot away from somebody. I don't know. Well, I mean, there aren't the, I, how many people are we talking about? Because you still have to kick field goals, and usually that's your kickoff specialist Guy, is right. your field goal kicker. So it may we're talking about maybe, what, five or six people? I mean, the NFL PA can make that claim, but the NFL is going to literally tell you, well, that's like 0.003% of our workforce that you're, you're fighting for here. Well, I do want to give you credit, Jeff, that Jeff Kimbrell is in the game. The Craig prob- Kimbrell. Uh, Craig yeah. Kimbrell is in the game. But you're Jeff save, I was thinking about that. Uh, uh, yeah. He can't get a save, right? Because, but he can't, right. He can't get a save because it's the 10th inning. So, <laughs> by the way, they also brought in GT Romuto and a double switch. So, wow. They really want to win this game. So we'll see if they actually win it or not. Philly's in the bottom, top of the ten, and already a leadoff double. Great. Well, no, no. Remember that's that's <laughs> no. the that's the man on second. Oh, row. you know what? I thought that was going away this year. I forgot that they do that. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it goes away in the postseason because you know sports. Yeah, I would like to see that done away with in total. <laughs> he is Jeff Mosher. Give him a follow on Twitter at Jeff B Mosher. Check out all of his work over at the InsideTheBirds.com. And, of course, the Inside the Birds podcast drops each week, different episodes with Adam Kaplan and more. Like, subscribe, download, share with your friends, five-star review, all the good stuff. Jeff, uh, I won't talk to you again on radio until next week. Uh, well, because you're off the rest of the week. So, uh, yeah. But I, you know, I hope you have a, a great Memorial Day weekend. If you do decide to travel to the shore, uh, I hope you hit me up for some suggestions, okay? I promise you I will. (laughs) Take care, my friend. (laughs) Bye.